this video talks about lipid metabolism right from the beginning so let's get right into it so what happens is when we take in dietary fat we are going to absorb this dietary fat through a product called chylom chylomacron now chylomacron are made in the intestinal cell they take up all the cholesterol and all the tag and then they put it together to make a big blob of fat called chylomacron. Now these chylomacron enter the intestine and they travel through the lacteals and onto the lymphatic system and at the end they dump itself onto the blood and that's how it gets available to all over the body. So whenever we're talking about this, let's say this is our first chylomacron which is in our lymphatic system. Now when our chylomacron is in the lymph, the way we recognize, or we, how do we recognize that something is chylomacron? They're going to have tags. All these products is going to have tags, and that's how we know that a certain product is that particular product. So how do we know chylomacron is chylomacron? We know it because it has a tag ApoB48. Now this only ApoB48 is going to be present in the lymph, okay? As soon as this chylomacron reaches the blood, there is going to be two additional tags, and those are APOC2 and APOE. So from our chylomacron in the lymph, our chylomacron is going to the blood, and as soon as the chylomacron is above blood, along with ApoB48, now we have APOC2 and APOE. Now what is the function of APOC2? What APOC2 does is when this chylomacron is passing this fat, this APOC2 is going to activate the lipoprotein lipase. As a result, it's going to dump some of its fat onto its fat tissue. Okay, It's going to dump some of its tag in this fat tissue before moving on. So as soon as it moves on, it's going to lose this APOC2 because that APOC2 was used to, to, to activate this lipoprotein lipase to dump some of the fat. Right? So that's... The chylomicron that we are going to see here now, which is the remnant chylomicron, is going to have ApoB48 because that is how we recognize that something is chylomicron. And it's going to have ApoE. It's not going to have ApoC2 anymore because ApoC2 was already used to activate this lipoprotein lipase. Now this remnant chylomicron is going to make its way to the liver, okay? And the entire chylomicron is going to be metabolized in the liver. And how would liver know that this is something I am ready to accept? Liver recognizes ApoE. Okay? ApoE is a marker for liver to say that, okay, this can enter the liver for met metabolism. Now let's do a quick review of what we, did, what we did in terms of the receptors. So ApoB is secreted by epithelial cells. ApoC2 was found in the blood, which activates lipoprotein lipase. APOE is a signal for uptake of the liver, right? And that is how the chylomicron is ending up in the liver to dump its cholesterol onto the liver. So now what's happening in the liver? The cholesterol that was collected from the chylomicron is stored into TAG. TAG can also be formed from glucose. And I will go over that, um, how glucose can make TAG and how TAG is, there is a pathway that exchanges fatty tissue with the liver in terms of TAG. So I'll go over that at a later time in this video. But for now, we are focusing on our uh, lipoproteins. So what happens is now liver is secreting something called VLDL. Okay. Now, whenever we are calling VLDL, it means it's coming from the liver itself. And how do we know that something is a VLDL? Or how do we know that something uh, is secreted from the liver? We know it by a tag. And in this case, the tag is ApoB100. As soon as we see ApoB100, we are 100% sure that that is coming from the liver. And we are calling that VLDL, something that has a tag of ApoB100. So when our VLDL is initially in the blood, we only have ApoB100. But as it travels more in the blood, there is ApoC2 and ApoE in the blood, just like these were in the case of chylomicron. They were floating around in the blood. They came and sat on the chylomicron. The exact same thing happens with VLDL. ApoC2 and ApoE comes and sits on our VLDL, roaming around in the blood, right? And this is again, again, the ApoC2 is used 
to activate lipoprotein lipase here. Okay, and again we're going to lose our APOC2 as it activates our lipoprotein lipase. So as we're activating our lipoprotein lipase at the fat tissue, it's converting the free fatty acid into TAG, and that is also happening from chylomicron. The free fatty acid from the chylomicron is get, gets converted to TAG. So this system in the fat is very much analogous with the system that's going on in the liver, right? So I'll talk about that separately. Again, let's focus on our lipoproteins here. So now, once our VLDL activated its tag, now it is called the VLDL remnant. So now this is our VLDL remnant. Another name for VLDL remnant is IDL. So what kind of tags is going to be present in our VLDL remnant? There is going to be ApoB100, just like our VLDL, and it ApoE, just like our VLDL. The only thing that's going to be missing here is going to be ApoC2 because we have already used up our ApoC2, right? So I'm going to delete all this here just so that I can put the rest of the picture in the same page. So this is all going to be gone. So bear with me here.